All right, well, welcome and good morning. My name is Katie Mannix and I am Biomed Programs Coordinator at the Marion Institute in Marion, Mass. And this morning we have the privilege of being joined by Dr. Dixon Tom from the ACBM Clinic in Arizona, as well as the Biomed Center in New England and by John G. Andrade, locally known as Buddy Andrade. And the two uh, of our guests are going to be discussing um, health and how to balance the immune system. So with no further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Buddy to get us going. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, or good afternoon, where we're at. Um, my name is Buddy Andrade. I'm the uh, president of the Minority Action Committee here in the city of New Bedford and with the Old Bedford Village Development Corporation. We have partnered with the Marion Institute to bring information to the community about health, health and wellness, about the immune system, about things that can make you live longer, live better, and, and healthier uh, of our communities as well. So we're gonna talk about a variety of things that impact your immune system, how we, make, how we get healthy, stay healthy, and be healthy. We're gonna talk about sleep, we're gonna talk about water, we're gonna talk about food, our health, air, uh, uh, your home, things in your home, other things in the community uh, that affect and impact our health, uh, stress, nutrients, minerals, uh, things of that nature. So um, we have a special person on board, uh, Dr. Tom, who is going to help us learn, educate ourselves and the community on how to stay healthy, and particularly with this COVID stuff and other serious diseases that may affect the Community. Dr. Tom, how are you? Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, always a pleasure uh, to speak and try and educate people on everyday things that uh, they can do. Uh, health is a challenge and is, it's the type of thing that uh, I think we need to be thinking about on an everyday basis. Uh, the goal of health is, is not to uh, wait until you don't have it and then try and get it back. Uh, the goal is to be more preventive and to try and uh, stay ahead of the game, stay ahead of it. And as you just mentioned, uh, there's so many everyday things that we can be doing. In fact, we are doing without realizing it. But if we put a, a specific direction uh, with some of these uh, things, like you mentioned, about how much water do you drink and how much sleep do you get and what food are you eating, uh, et cetera, and, and I think there's a lot of misconception about, you know, what is the immune system? And, you know, we always, we, you know, could, 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 you, could you, could you stop with that right there, uh, Dr. Then, what, you know, what, what is, you know, why is it important? You know, how, how, what, what does the mean by balancing it and all that? So, so that people can understand that uh, right there in their body is, is their protection. How does that work? The, the immune system has evolved over, uh, the evolution of us as humans as, as a way to protect us from something that's outside of us, uh, outside of us in the fact of uh, what mostly we think of microbes, uh, but whether it's a virus or whether it's a bacteria or whether it's a parasite or whether it's a pesticide, whatever, you know, the, the immune system has evolved and developed to be able to recognize and the, the simplest way of thinking about it. The body looks at it and says, oh, I can use that or this is foreign to me and I need to somehow get rid of it. So the immune system has multiple levels that, uh, you know, the first aspect of the immune system that people don't realize is our skin. Uh, you know, our skin is very porous, but you know, if you stick your hands in, in some type of a poison substance, that's gonna be absorbed into your body. So we have this barrier that is our skin, but you also have a number of other things. And before we get to, you know, what are vaccines doing in that, it's like, we have mucus in our nose that flushes things out. We have uh, stomach acid in our digestive system that if we ingest some type of a parasite or whatever from a food, you know, the, the stomach acid will kill it. So we have those, so we, it's, which says that, so we need to be thinking about uh, all those types of avenues. Uh, it's a good idea to, uh, you know, to have mucus. How do we get the most mucus? You mentioned it, you drink water. Without any doubt, the best, part of the immune system to support flushing things out is, is water. And water, the, the simple formula we use is half your body weight in ounces. If you weigh 150 pounds, would mean you drink 75 ounces of water. And the most important aspect of drinking water is we drink water between meals, not with meals. 
because if we drink water with meals, we're just further di uh, diluting our digestive enzymes, which makes it harder to break down the food, which means it's harder for the, for the nutrients in the food to be absorbed, which will support uh, our immune system. Now, if something gets past our skin, gets past our nose, gets past our digestive system, we then have you know, uh, white blood cells uh, that basically are part of our immune system. And if it gets past the white blood cells, then we get into making antibodies, which is in our lymphocytes, which right now uh, with COVID and with COVID vaccines, that's really what the vaccine is attempting to do is to allow the body to make uh, antibodies that when we get exposed to the coronavirus or any virus for that matter, uh, the body will be able to rapidly uh, upregulate itself uh, so that we don't become seriously ill. So we have these multiple levels of the immune system, and but they're all important. Your skin is just as important as your antibodies are. And so, so how, how would we uh, uh, impact uh, uh, that, that balance of the immune system uh, through the, the other areas you were talking about with your six point uh, plan that you have, uh, how does that all connect with each other so that people can see uh, that they need to develop a routine that's healthy and consistent? They, you know, what, what has historically been well known is that the immune system is significantly uh, depressed or suppressed by stress. And stress, what's interesting about stress is is more our interpretation of stress and how we think about stress. We are, we are all under stress in general, but our attitude about stress has a lot to do with whether we will suppress that immune system or not. Uh, if we have unhealthy skin, uh, how do we have unhealthy skin? We don't drink enough water. We don't have take enough uh, essential fatty acids in our diet, whether it's through fish or nuts or seeds or avocados. Uh, you know, those types of things, which also will help our skin. And so we, we have to look at our diet, but then we also have to look at, are you getting adequate levels of sleep? Uh, all the research shows that seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep is pretty much what's required on an everyday basis. And the best way to do that is, uh, is to ensure that is to that you set a schedule for going to bed, let's say 10 o'clock or 1030, and then you get it up more or less at the same time. You get up and you go to bed uh, at the same times. And when you do that, your immune system and your other uh, organ systems are very well conditioned to say, oh, this person's going to get enough sleep because it's only during sleep that we actually are repairing ourselves. As we're sitting here talking, the body is doing so many things. It's not repairing much. So when we get sick, we get tired. There's a reason because if you don't sleep, you don't heal. And, you know, the, this and part of this, the COVID aspect, we know fatigue is one of the things and people will say, well, I'm so tired. Well, your body is still trying to heal. And people will say, well, I'll drink coffee because I'm tired. It's that mm, not a good thing. You need more sleep if you're tired uh, in general, even if you don't have uh, any form of a, an infection in general. So the, the sleep is, is a huge component as there are others, as we'll talk about it. Now, now, you mentioned uh, um, about in the home and, and, and the health as it relates to, uh, to the immune system. Uh, what is the effect of that? What, what are you trying to get people to understand there? They, they, there are more things that we can do. I mean, everybody thinks if, you know, when we have an illness, we go to the doctor and the doctor comes up with some solution for us. But the reality is long before you get to the doctor, there are really everyday things that we need to be doing for ourselves and can be doing for ourselves that don't cost us anything, uh, but that can be incredibly helpful. Uh, one of the things is, it's well known that we need to move our body on an everyday basis. And the best movement that we can all do isn't necessarily going to the gym, it's simply getting outside uh, and then uh, walking. Uh, ideally, the, the goal, uh, the, all the research has shown that if you can move your body about 150 minutes uh, a week, which is 30 minutes five times a day or 20 minutes so seven times a day, we'll say, uh, that by itself is one of the best things you could ever do for your immune system uh, in general. In addition to that, getting outside, irregardless of what the air is like outside, we know that 70% of everyone's exposure to 
things that are foreign, I will say that toxins are actually in their house. They're under their kitchen sink. They're in their garage. Uh, they're in their attic. Uh, they're in their under their bathroom sink. Those are the places that need to, we need to get rid of that stuff. That stuff should not actually be in the house. Uh, if you live in, a, in an apartment and you have a, something on your patio where you can store things like that, it shouldn't be in your living quarters because that's always admitting some type of a, you know, you may not smell it, you may not see it, but those things are incredibly harmful in the long term to our, our systems, our immune systems in general. So getting outside, walking, breathing fresh air, and breathe, we breathe about up to 20,000 times a day. One of the best ways to support your immune system is to take deep breaths. So we breathe 12, 15 times a minute, but if you actually take time, whether you're in meditation or just sitting relaxing and slow your breathing down to maybe only breathe five times a minute, which means you are deliberately inhaling <clears throat> through your nose, fill your lungs totally up, try and push out your belly and then breathing out really slowly through your mouth and do that multiple times through the day. So I tell my patients, if you're sitting at a stoplight, practice a couple of deep breaths. Uh, if you're standing in the line at the bank, practice deep breathing. If you're standing at the grocery store. So it's not like, oh, I have to take time out of my life to practice. We, we are already doing things at times so we could easily incorporate this. And what I found is if people practice that for a period of time, and I'll say take 100 deep breaths in a day, what it becomes is automatic. And almost without thinking, people will sort to because the body says, this feels really good uh, to be able to do that. And I'm gonna just do this more often uh, per se. And we can actually increase uh, the amount of oxygen that we're getting in, which our immune system loves, is you know, getting in uh, all those deep breaths uh, and the that's amount back of- to our, That's back to our behavior. So if we do it on a routine basis, it'll make the body and the brain work together. Now, that's how, how, how can we tie that also to food. You know, the food is something that we all obviously require. Food is, is not only, a, uh, you know, something that we eat to consume calories, but in the food that we eat are essential nutrients, uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, essential acids, etc., which is what we get from our foods, which is how we fuel our body. It's how we get the energy we have to be able to move around and do what it is what we do. So the, the, the key factor of food is colors. The more colors of food that you can eat on an everyday basis, the happier your immune system is. And so the latest research from a couple of years ago has shown that if people will consume 10 different colors of fruits and vegetables a day, there's dramatic decreases in the incidence of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, uh, autoimmune diseases, simply because they're eating, you know, different colors of food. So whether they're eating red apples or red beets or green peppers or uh, yellow cantaloupe or squash or carrots or grapes that are that are purple or, uh, you know, a green, a green avocados, green. So just a whole variety of different colors throughout the day is is probably one of the best things you could ever do from a dietary perspective, uh, which will support uh, immune function, which will support your body's ability uh, to deal with anything that basically you get exposed to. Uh, on the what, what, what colors should we be, should be uh, aware of, or concerned about? What colors are, are, the, are the red, black type colors? You know, typically we say that the biggest concern are so-called the white foods, the white foods specifically salt, oh, too much salt uh, and sugar um, are really your two most, I'll say, devastating. We tend to overconsume salt in our society. We definitely tend to overconsume sugar, even though it's disguised in a whole bunch of different names. We know that those two substances actually can be negative, have a negative impact on your immune system. So, and if you're eating whole foods, as I say, that, and you're adding a little bit of salt for taste, that's, that's different than if you're buying your food out of a box, a box or a package, because those foods are heavily salted to add taste and, and 
So, you know, in general, people are easily eating over about 5,000 milligrams of salt a day when we only need probably less than a few hundred milligrams of salt a day. But so if we're eating whole foods and if we are eating, adding salt at the dinner table, then we should be choosing things like Himalayan salt, sea salt, rock salt, uh, Celtic salt that are not just sodium chloride, but actually are a mix of multiple minerals. In seawater, there's you know probably 70 or 80 different minerals if you were to evaporate it. And it's certainly not just so sodium chloride. So the white foods are ones we try and minimize uh, as much as possible. Well, well, doctor, we've covered a lot of areas and we want to get our viewers to, to, to engage with us and, and, and find out more specifics what we're talking about. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to uh, do another, another show real soon and get into the, uh, the, 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 some of the nitty gritty stuff and how to really communicate and, and work with the audience. Uh, this is so important in what we're trying to do. Uh, meet, uh, we meet uh, the needs of information uh, to seep into the communities and get people to get into the good behaviors of good health and a good future. All right, well, thank you both for joining us today. Uh, it was a great conversation to be part of and to listen to, and hopefully people listening from home or wherever they're listening pick up on a lot of the, the information that's been shared. It is a lot to take in. So we will also be providing Mr. Andrade uh, with a lot of resources to share and, and those in, uh, resources can be shared with anyone. Um, a breakdown of the information on how to balance your immune system uh, will be included a, a, along with that. And that goes over the points that Dr. Tom mentioned today, as well as a number of other um, free uh, resources that are both local and that apply broadly, uh, many of which are virtual. So thank you again for your time today and uh, and for having this great discussion, allowing us to be part of it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.